Hey, I'm Alvin and I love baking, especially with chocolate. Now over the years, I have upgraded from cheaper chocolate and slowly, slowly, slowly gotten more expensive to the point where now I spend $48 a pound on chocolate when baking. I used to start with chocolate that was around $12 a pound. So today I actually want to put to the test the differences between using the two and to see if they make a difference. So I want to answer three questions. Number one, does baking with $48 chocolate versus $12 chocolate affect the taste, the texture, and the joy of eating and making these desserts? Number two, which desserts will have the most significant difference and which dessert will have the least significant difference? And finally, number three, is it even worth that extra 36 bucks to shell out for this chocolate, in my opinion. I've slowly upgraded throughout the years, but I really want to put these side by side to compare what you're getting for that extra money. So the $48 chocolate is from Valrona. This is their Araguani brand. It's 72% cacao content. I got it online for about $48 per pound. As you can see, it says Grand Cru de Terroir, which I believe is a champagne term or a wine term. I think it refers to the fact that this is coming from a place that is reputable for its production. It is a dark chocolate. Seems like it comes from Venezuela and it says it's chocolatey and full bodied and based on the price, it better be. On the back, it also says, from its strikingly bitter essence, Araguani offers a rich and complex aromatic profile featuring warm notes, which raisins, chestnuts, licorice, and roasted notes. I'll be trying to keep an eye out for those just to show you what this chocolate looks like. It, it pours out into these nice little fevs. I believe that's their signature shape. Valrona is known for having their chocolates be in this shape. Here I am just cutting up into very uneven pieces intentionally spilling everywhere. Now this is the $12 chocolate. This is Lint. I'm using their 70% cocoa pure dark chocolate bar. I've been using this one for quite a while. You can pretty much find this anywhere. They claim to have exceptional cocoa flavor. I'll be the judge of that. Excellence is in all caps, twice. Apparently there's a master chocolatier creating a bar of this exquisite. This is what the bar looks like. It comes in a full on 10 squares per bar. Nice shine to it. Also cutting this into very, very uneven pieces intentionally. I really want that texture for what I'm about to make. Here we go, Alvin, just spilling everywhere. That's that's gonna be a theme. I gotta eat the scraps. So who says it's a loss? Chocolate's in my mouth, everybody's happy. These chocolates are side by side, as you can see. The color difference between the two is quite striking. The Valrona chocolate is also thicker because it's not from the bar form, they're from the feb, so they are a little bit thicker. So immediately, there's a difference. First off, I'm actually making chocolate chip cookies. Very standard recipe. We've done it on Tasty many times. Very basic, almost similar to the Toll House recipe. This is not my personal crazy recipe because I didn't want to throw too many things in. I wanted the chocolate to show me what difference it can make in these cookies. So I decided to keep it very, very, very straightforward. Just like any other chocolate chip cookie recipe you'll see out there, the only difference is the chocolate I'm using. I'm making a double batch and I'm dividing the dough in half so that everything can be as consistent as possible. On the left goes in the lint chocolate, on the right goes in the Valrona, and we are off to the races. This is also just very, very therapeutic, and I, I just enjoy baking with good stuff. These are my two doughs. I don't know if you can tell, but the one on the right with the Valrona is slightly darker. I think that's because the little chocolate dust from chopping the Valrona actually melted. Maybe because it's a better tempered chocolate that it'll melt faster and smoother, but it is coloring the dough a little bit, and I'm curious to see how that'll change the flavor of the end product. That's another difference I noticed right away, is that the melted little dust particles from the cutting board seem to actually have melted into the dough. That's not happening with the lint, maybe because they're tempered differently, but that is a difference that I do notice. All right, so after these go in the fridge for a little bit to set up, I'm just scooping them into huge, huge cookie dough balls, because that's what I like to do, six per tray. And I'm noticing that the one on the right with the Valrona is already a little stiffer than the one on the left. Maybe that's because the little chocolate has melted into the dough, causing it to harden just a little bit. The color change is still slightly apparent, as you can see. These go into the oven, 350 degrees for around 10 to 15 minutes. These are big cookies, and I know my oven. It is very different to bake on the top rack versus the middle rack, so I'm going to bake one batch at a time, keeping the other batch in the fridge. This is the first batch with the lint chocolate, very 
very happy. Look at those. So these cookies, as you can see, have golden brown, beautiful, slightly crispy edges on the outside. You can see the chocolate poking through. Some of it has melted, some of it has not. And I'm throwing in the batch with the Verona chocolate. So the Verona chocolate, same baking time, same baking temp, and when they come out, the first difference I notice immediately is that we have these pools of giant chocolate on the left side. The $48 chocolate seems to be melting into these beautiful spots, which I personally like more. It's a signature of someone made this cookie by hand. I think the unevenness, the inconsistency, I like that a lot. Whereas on the right with the $12 chocolate, they seem to be staying where they were put. And that's not a good or a bad thing. That's just something that I had noticed. Oh man, I love cookies. This is great. So these are gonna cool, and I'm gonna make my next recipe, which is brownies. Again, a very straightforward brownie recipe with sugar, eggs, vanilla. And what I like to do with my brownies is actually whip the eggs and the sugar quite high so that they get some aeration. I believe that's what gives it that crackle crust that you want on top. In goes some butter and in goes the melted chocolate. This is the $12 lint chocolate melted. Smooth, glossy, beautiful ripples of chocolate and sugar and eggs and becomes this amazing looking mixture that also smells great. Now the flour goes in, just beating that a little bit, and some cocoa powder that I've sifted. This is Dutch processed cocoa powder, so it is very good quality cocoa powder that adds a nice chocolate flavor. I will be using that for both tests, but I did want to use good cocoa powder. Topping up some uneven lint chocolate chunks to fold into the batter, because I do like that as well. So this brownie both has the lint chocolate in forms of melted and chopped in chunks to see what it will do to the brownie. After that, just throwing it into a square pan, spreading it nice and even with a little bit of parchment paper on the bottom. This is what the $12 chocolate brownies look like. Nice cracking on top. I can see a tiny bit of the chocolate peeking from underneath and we're gonna get started on the other batch. So exact same recipe with the eggs, butter, sugar, vanilla, but this is with the $48 Valrona chocolate. Smooth, glossy, beautiful. Looks pretty much the same as the lint chocolate when they're melted. I can't really tell if there's a difference, but it does feel slightly thinner. Maybe that's because it melts down differently or the composition is a little bit different, but it is slightly thinner. I know it's very hard to tell, but I felt it when I mixed it. This also gets folded in these beautiful chocolate ribbons, I'm sifting in some cocoa powder, and also sifting in that flour, which I also forgot to sift before, but should not make a huge difference in these brownies. Again, mixing this until it is barely combined. I don't want to overwork the flour too much. And then in goes some barely chopped Valrhona chocolate into these fevs. I try to get them to the same size as the lint ones, and these are naturally nice because you don't really have to cut these too much or at all. I could have thrown these straight in. I really like the size. In goes the batter into the pan, same as before, and in they go into the oven. Nice and pretty. I tried to make sure that the tops looked the same before they baked so that it wasn't big chunks of chocolate sticking out. And after the same amount of time, here they are. Craggly bits on top. I don't know if it's bias or maybe because it's a placebo, but I do notice a little bit more of those chocolate pools peeking out. I put them in the fridge for about an hour or two so to set up, and it's 3 a.m which is the perfect time to cut open these brownies. This is the lint chocolate version, the $12 chocolate inside these brownies. Nice squares, a nice carving knife, good cutting skills. <sighs> okay, look at that, two nice squares. This is the cross section. The $12 chocolate, you can see little chunks are still in there, which is what I like to see. Some air bubbles, I'm not sure from what. I might have overmixed it a little bit, but solid looking brownie. Okay, this is the $48 Valrhona chocolate in the brownies. Same exact cutting technique, try to get them to the same size. Okay, so you see the little bit of chocolate that's in there is actually has this sort of snapped craggly texture. I like that because that means the chocolate is tempered well when it snaps and cracks. I prefer that, I think it'll have some nice texture, but they look very, very similar. The melted chocolate on the inside doesn't visually seem to have changed too much. So it'll all come down to taste and texture on this one. As you can see, 
more snap from the Valrona on the left and a little bit more of that smoother togetherness from the chocolate on the right. But batter wise, they look exactly the same. I'm moving on to my final dessert. This is a chocolate tart that I do enjoy making. I've actually made this on the About to Eat channel in the three ways we use chocolate video, but this is the shortcut version because I do want to only compare the chocolate. These are store-bought pie crusts I'm baking in the oven until they get super brown, till I realize that I forgot to poke the bottom so that the bubbles don't come out. Ah, oh, when you do this, I just yank them out. Nobody tell. I just gotta poke these. Crisis averted. These are nice tart shells. Looking pretty good. They get to cool. And 500 grams of the chopped up $12 lint chocolate. And 500 grams of the $48 Valrona chocolate. It is equal parts of heavy cream that has been heat it to a simmer. This will be poured into the chocolate and I'm gonna cover it with a plate to let the chocolate and the cream melt together slowly. This is actually a recipe inspired by a famous patissier named Jacques Genin. He's famous for a lot of tarts and I really like his recipe because it's very simple. Same thing with the Valrona, mix together the cream and the chocolate, shake the air bubbles out, we don't want air bubbles, and put the plane on. Let them sit for a couple minutes and then everything should be slightly ready to go. Here's the trick to his tarts. His tarts, you put the spatula in the bottom of the bowl and you do not let the bottom of the spatula leave the bottom of the bowl. So that when you're mixing this together, that there's no air incorporation. This takes forever. This is 10 minutes since the last shot. And I've been stirring slowly with one hand for a very long time. I had to switch hands because I was getting tired. But Patience will be rewarded. As you can see, it's getting glossier. It's finally coming together, and this is where it is beautiful. Holy moly, are you kidding me? And this is what it looks like. As you can see, I've been trying to mix these out, but I believe these are some small microscopic bits. There's some of them are air bubbles, some of them might be sugar crystals, some of them might be solids from the chocolate that were not tempered too well. I'm not sure, but this is visually what the $12 chocolate ganache looks like. It's shiny, it's, it's glossy, there's it's, it's a freaking mirror in there. You can even see my window on that. That's how nice and glossy. So this is the lint version, and now for the Valrona version. So same exact thing, you just gotta slowly stir, but uh, you know, sometimes you gotta take your time with certain things like this, especially if it involves your hands. You know, you don't wanna rush it. Sometimes the process is more fun than the end result as we can clearly see. Might be some air bubbles in there, also because it was a little colder, because I let it sit as I was doing the other one, that it might have thickened up, but we will only tell by the taste. So these go in the fridge. These chilled for about two hours. I can just take them out of the tray. Time for a little bit of Maldon sea salt. I love Maldon sea salt, especially for this. I think it looks beautiful. I think this is a great garnish but these tarts look very identical. I'm cutting into the lint one first. It is quite soft as I cut it, but this is what a slice looks like. Nice, thick, beautiful. This is the Valrona version. I do notice as I'm cutting it, it is a lot firmer than the lint one. Again, I think the tempering has something to do with it, but it does not flop. The tip does not droop over like in the other tart. This is what they look like side by side. Honestly, ignoring the crust, pretty much identical. Besides the fact that one is slightly firmer, but visually, you can't really tell which one is which. On to the taste test. We have those cookies and brownies from before. Each one is side by side for comparison. So we have the cookies with the $48 chocolate, the $12 chocolate, brownie, same thing, same shenanigans. Let's get eaten, because I'm hungry. This is the chocolate chip cookie made with the $12 chocolate, the lint chocolate. As you break it, See these nice chunks of chocolate staying in their form? This is the cookie made of the $48 chocolate. Instantly you see that there are larger pools running throughout the cookie. It's kind of like it melted and spread throughout it, staining and streaking throughout the cookie. So here they are side by side. You can definitely see the texture is very different with both of them. One of them is like a chocolate chunk cookie. One of them is like a chocolate pool cookie. Even in this cross section, you can see how the chocolate seems to like to stay in one place with the lint and sort of move around like nobody's business in the Valrona. Upon tasting, huge difference. The lint cookie, very traditional. It tastes like a Toll House cookie. It tastes nostalgic, very comforting, sweet, straightforward, solid cookie. 
The Varona cookie, a little bit more bitter, lots of puddles of gooey chocolate, not chunks, and it tastes more complex, tastes deeper. It kind of makes you think a little bit about the flavors inside this cookie. Personally, I prefer the Varona one because I don't like desserts that are too sweet, but I kind of was missing the texture of the chunks you get from the Lent cookie because I did like that texture difference from just biting into those pure nuggets of just chocolate amazingness. I wish the Valrona one kind of did that. On to the brownies. The Lint one is on the left, the Valrona one is on the right. So here is the texture. Pretty soft, pretty chewy upon eating it. Again, very straightforward, classic brownie taste. If you've ever went to like a wedding or a catering event, you've had a nice solid brownie, that's exactly what it tastes like. The one on the right, a little bit firmer as I'm digging in, and there's a little bit of snap I'm noticing from biting those chocolate chunks that were folded in, because I think the way the chocolate is tempered, it sets up firmer once it is cooled, but melts quicker once it is warm. Again, I'm noticing the same thing as the cookies, the one on the left, very straightforward. It is the definition of what brownie is in your mind. One on the right, a little bit more complex. This one, you taste the chocolate a little bit more because it is a chocolate-focused dessert and you get the chunks, so it's a little bit more interesting. Chocolate tart time. Oh, I'm starting with the Valrona one this time. Very firm, very fudgy to kind of get through. Nice, thick, dense texture. And this is where I notice the flavor of the chocolate the absolute most. I'm tasting notes that I haven't tasted from the previous two desserts. On the bag, it said the Varona one had like raisins and chestnuts, and I didn't really taste that. Anyways, moving on to the next one, the Lindt chocolate tart. The moment I cut into it, it's very soft, a lot softer than the Valrona tart. I think it's the way, again, the chocolate and sugars may be setting up in the fridge, but definitely this one melts in your mouth and is a little softer to the tongue. So back to those three questions from earlier. Number one, is the difference in prices between the chocolate reflected in the differences in quality and taste, flavor, and texture in the desserts? Absolutely. In every single one of these desserts, the cookie, the brownie, the tart, I noticed a very significant difference in each of them. The qualities of the Lindt chocolate seemed to be that it was sweeter, it was less prone to melting, also less prone to firming up, and may have this very single-noted, nostalgic, comforting chocolate taste. The Valrona chocolate, on the other hand, was more complex. It melted quicker and it set up firmer, and it also added a textural and aroma difference to a lot of the desserts that the Lindt did not. And not saying one is better, but just very different. Question number two, in which dessert are the differences most noticeable and also the least noticeable? The most noticeable difference between the chocolates showed in the chocolate tart. That thing is like 90% chocolate. It's as if the chocolate were naked. There's nothing to hide. It's showing everything it's got. You can't really mask it with a lot of other things because there's not a lot of heat added. There's not a lot of ingredients. And this tart is literally three ingredients, chocolate, cream on top of a pre-bought pie crust. And I kind of understand why Jacques Janin has this recipe for his chocolate tart. It's simple, and if he's using really good quality chocolate, I'm sure he wouldn't want to hide it. He'd want to show it off, and he wouldn't want to mask it with a lot of other things. So that makes so much sense now, because I've actually made this tart with different chocolate every single time, pretty much, and they've all tasted very different from each other. It really is just highlighting the pure quality and the pure taste and aroma of the chocolate. The dessert that I noticed the least differences, even though it was still significant, was the brownie. So maybe that's because things were more mixed in. Maybe that's because there were a lot more ingredients. I also added Dutch processed cocoa powder. And question number three, is the difference in price worth spending extra or less money on? I honestly don't think there's a right or wrong answer to this. I know that sounds like a cop out, but let's put it this way. The $12 lint chocolate is like watching Transformers. Sometimes you just wanna feel good, you don't wanna think, you just wanna lay back, put something on, and enjoy yourself. And that's exactly what that chocolate does. It, it's not too loud, it doesn't get in your way, you don't have to spend a lot of money, it gets the job done, and it is really, really satisfying. The Valrona chocolate, it's like a Christopher Nolan film, let's put it that way. It's complex, it's a little bit deeper, there's some good rewatch value, you know, you gotta think a little bit about it. And personally, I like food that makes me think. I like food that when I put it in my mouth, I go, huh, 
or hmm, I wonder how they did that, or I wonder if I picked up on a lot of those things that I might have not picked up from Transformers. Yes, I am a bit biased because I love Christopher Nolan, but I would personally spend that money to make desserts like the chocolate tart if the difference was noticeable enough. But also, I'm a person who bakes for other people. I really don't bake for myself because I think it's something that I just enjoy baking and handling good ingredients and that's the fun of it for me. I'm on a massive sugar rush right now. So I wanna try and calm down a little bit and then I'll probably go to the gym to use all this extra energy. But thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.